virtual education. So today we are going to talk about COPD and chronic lung diseases. So COPD, what is it? It's chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. It includes chronic bronchitis, emphysema, and any kind of chronic lung disease that makes it harder for you to breathe with and you live with it every day. So it's going to be those diseases that affect your lungs particularly. So some key points is it's first and foremost, it's chronic. You live with it every day. It doesn't go away. It usually does not get better. Uh, other than we can treat it and we can often prevent it, which is uh, point number three. There is no cure for it, but our goal here in rehab is to take what you have and make you more efficient with it so that you can live and continue to live a normal life as much as possible. It is one of the most leading causes of serious long-term disability as well as early death. It's up there. It ranks up there underneath heart disease and cancer. Uh, COPD is sometimes referred to as chronic bronchitis or emphysema, so if you've heard that you have those, you also are considered to possibly be having COPD as a side. So cigarette smoke is by far the most common reason why most people develop COPD. Either they're a first-hand smoker, they're a second-hand smoker, or maybe they've gotten it from the third-hand smoke. So first-hand smoker is you are the one that is actually doing the smoking. So you get it from tobacco products such as cigar and pipe smoking, cigarettes, vaping, um, any kind of those vape juices can do it as well, uh, especially if you breathe in the smoke, you're going to get the tar and the nicotine, but it's also a major effect with the nicotine as well. Uh, the secondhand smoke is also an issue. Uh, so secondhand smoke is when the person next to you or 10 feet away or six feet away in this case is smoking and that you're breathing in their smoke and having an effect from that. Then you have third hand smoke, which is living in an environment with smoke. So that can be residuals from the nicotine and other chemicals left on surfaces. So those surfaces can be your clothes, they can be your car, they can be the curtains, the carpet. And you've noticed if you've ever quit smoking or you're a non-smoker, you walk into an area that has smoke, you can smell it pretty instantly. Um, and that is the effects of third-hand smoke. So still not a good situation to have. All right, so the diagnosis of COPD. There are many different ways that they actually diagnose this. Um, so mostly is it's going to be breathing, exercise, and oxygen tests. So they're going to look at your spirometry, which is breathing um, part of that breathing test that you do, the pulmonary function test, uh, where you come in and you breathe into that little tube, uh, a pulse oximeter. So you guys always tell us you need this. So <laughs> we come around and stick that thing on your finger. Arterial blood gas testing, where they actually test the gases that are in your blood through circulatory, um, a bronchial provocation test, where they actually send the scope down and look, and as well as x-rays and CT scans. Some of the other tests that they can run, run and uh, actually see if you have issues is an EKG, an echocardiogram, um, which is an ultrasound of your heart, a cardiac stress test, which is where you actually get on a treadmill, or they use chemicals and see what your heart does and how you respond, and then as well as a bronchoscopy, which is really when they send that down. All right, so nicotine effect on, on, your, uh, on your lungs. So the nicotine actually damage and paralyze the cilia, which the cilia are those little things that run down, and so they look like these little pink things right here, your little cilia. So they line your nostril, they line all the way down, and so basically they're there to keep everything and all the microbes and debris from entering into the interior lungs. Well, when you smoke, they get paralyzed, so they don't flagellate anymore and so they're stuck and with that being stuck they're not able to pick up that stuff as much as possible and so you're going to breathe more stuff in as an effect and then nicotine also can cause your heart rate to go up it blocks up so spirometry is a test that measures the airflow that goes into your lungs and out of the lungs so whenever you do a spirometry test which most of you did one with joe when you came into the program if you have copd um, he's actually measuring what your influx is as well as what your output is so it's important that you continue to get yearly testing done because you can progress in this stage in the stages of COPD and so the treatment options will change differently and it is good to see whether or not you are maintaining where you are or if you're making worse progression and what we can do to help you with that. Um, so pulmonary function tests provide more in-depth measure and usually that's going to involve more taking that treatment while you're actually doing it. And so when we are in class with us, what we're really looking at is your FEV1, um, which is your forced expiratory volume one. Uh, and so it's the measure, means of evaluating where you are and monitoring the progression 
So uh, it's the amount of air you can force out of your lungs in one second. So when we are doing it with you, we usually tell you we're going to blow as hard as we can. And so it's that very first blow that we're really trying to get out, as well as your total expiratory. So how can it be used to diagnose? Um, it isn't just the only tool. Uh, it is the one that they use to rank your stages. Uh, so it is part of a calculation called the FVC. Uh, which is your force vital capacity, and that's why we have you blow everything out that we can, um, which is the more amount that you can completely blow out. And so if your doctor thinks that you have COPD, they'll take your FEV1 and your FVC and look at that ratio, and that number kind of tells us where you fall in the rankings. And the higher it is, the larger your lung capacity and healthier your lungs are. So we want that number to be high. Uh, you diagnose with COPD if you fall under 70%. So that's... You know, it's really not that big of a change from 170 if you think about it that way. But as far as how amount of air that you're able to expel, when you go from 100% of air to expel down to 70%, you're retaining a lot more air and you're not getting that full breathing ability that you need to. Um, so pulse oximetry, which is that little thing that you always need. So I need my finger checked. I need my finger checked. It's the oxygen level that we can check in your finger. It uses an infrared sensor uh, and it just goes right on your fingertip, just like the pictures are showing. And we can detect what your heart oxygen levels are, as well as what your heart rate is. So we'll use this. Um, ideally, we want you above 88% when you're exercising. Uh, if you drop below 90 on room air while you're exercising, then that requires a little bit of need for extra oxygen. And those are one of the tools that we use to determine whether or not you need oxygen as to whether or not you can maintain what we want with exercise, as well as that rest. Um, so we look at it during exercise testing to see which you are so that's why when you come in and we do a walk test with you we are really watching what your pulse oxes are so we really want to know what your sats are to see if, whether or not you desaturate while you're exercising uh, so they're really not that hard to find and we encourage all of our patients especially our pulmonary patients to get one or if our heart patients if you can't call if you can't feel your pulse very easily, then it's good to get a pulse oximeter because it is going to help you catch work on your heart rate and it is going to watch that oxygen level for you too. So it's always a good tool. Um, they're not that expensive. They really come down in cost. When we when I first started working in rehab, they used to cost around $50 to $60 a piece. Uh, now you can find them as low as $18, $13. This is a little snapshot from Amazon. Uh, so that you can actually purchase one. You see the first one here is $18, the second one's $22, and the last one is $13. So they all work a little differently because they look different, but that's the main thing. They're all going to use the infrared sensor. It goes on your finger, and it'll tell you what your oxygen level is. The only thing is, is if you have nail polish ladies, it may not read through your nail polish or you may get an error. So we try to make sure that you keep your nails short on whatever finger you're going to use your pulse ox on and also try to keep it free from the nail polish and uh, too much dirt and grime. If you um, do wear it, and some people often find that sometimes they have a good finger, so uh, if you have Raynaud's or any kind of circulation problems in your hands, sometimes you have one finger that will read a little bit better than others, and so it is good to figure out which of your fingers is the best. Uh, so then we can also look at x-rays and CT scans. So this first picture here is a CT scan um, and x-rays of what a normal heart uh, lung tissue is, a mild uh, COPD, and then severe COPD. So you can see that the amount of um, alveoli and tissue depth in there is getting harder. All right, so here's your pop quiz. These are two x-ray scans of the lungs. So one of them is COPD and one of them is not. Do you know the difference between the two? So I know they're not reversed. So uh, any questions? Five, four, three, two, one. No. All right. So the big difference is this little arch right here. This is a healthy set of lungs. This is your diaphragm. The diaphragm is still working in this case. Here the diaphragm is not as well as engaged and being forced down a little bit more, so it's a lot flatter here. So you'll see that. This little gray area that you can kind of see on both of the x-rays, that's where your heart's located. All right, so they can also use an EKG. So if you have a talented uh, cardiologist, you can put a 12-lead EKG in front of them and they can tell you what's wrong with you. Uh, and I have seen it in action. It is really impressive. Uh, but we won't get into too much detail, but basically they can look at your EKG and see if different parts of the EKG are different, have a sag, have a tilt, um, which way it goes, and then uh, it exhibits a certain pattern and they can tell whether or not 
and you might have a possibility of having issues with your lungs. So bronchoscopy allows the doctor to look, go down and look inside your lungs down the airway. So sorry for those of you that are screamish, this picture is actually what your bronx look like when you get down to where they actually split apart. Uh, so your doctor can actually do a lavage, which is putting a small amount of fluid into the airway and then pull it out of the cells that way so they can examine them. Uh, biopsy of the airway is done with kind of the same way where they actually take a little piece of tissue out and uh, can examine that as well. Uh, okay. So this is our last slide for this presentation. Our next one will kind of go into a little bit more about some of the treatments and every possibilities of what we can do going forward with COPD. Thank you and have a great day.